the humble baron, the workhorse of our society. Let's face it, it keeps everything rolling. Now, on a big bearing like this, when stuff starts to dry out, it's simple to get in there, clean it up, add some grease. It's called packing. We've all done it. But what about these? What about a sealed bearing that is still good, but it's had a little too many miles on it? Those bearings that you pick them up and you roll them between your fingers and you just know it's not going to live much longer. Or this one. A shielded bearing in exactly the same condition. Well, I'll show you how you can bring those two back to useful life. Back in the equipment, back turning, rolling smooth, and double, possibly triple their lifespan. And all you need is a little bit of nothing. Now this is the machine that produces that nothing. And that nothing, of course, is vacuum. What we're going to do is pull the air out of the inside of the bearing with a little vacuum. And then when we let the atmosphere back in, it will push oil past, through, around the seals, inside. Next thing you know, you've got a freshly lubed bearing. What I've got here is a little jar of chainsaw bar oil. I like this when packing bearings simply because it's thin enough to slip on through, thick enough to do a good job, and it's very clingy, very stringy. All we're going to do is take our bearing, and this is a Canadian-made SKF, old one, vintage. She's been around a while, and I can feel that it's dry. No hard spots, just dry. This will be dropped in there. You could go ahead and leave that bearing soaking in there for days, and nothing would happen. Pull a little vacuum, let the atmosphere back in, and instantly you've got a lubed bearing. Okay, so what you're going to see here, as soon as the pump comes on, is bubbles boiling up out of the bearing itself. That's the air being extracted. It doesn't matter what condition the seals are in. This kind of force, you simply don't escape from. All right, now we've got our foam up there. Most of our big bubbles have stopped. We kill the pump. Now, once I let the air back in, all the pressure of the atmosphere is simply going to fill that bearing with oil. And you've got not only the vacuum inside the bearing trying to suck oil in, but you have basically pressurized oil trying to force its way in. Give it a few moments, especially with a sealed bearing, and voila, it's done. You can see why I like chainsaw bar oil. It's long, stringy drips. There it is. One vintage Canadian-made SKF shield bearing in perfect rolling condition. And I know what you're saying, but that's a shield bearing. And of course, as a shield bearing, it doesn't actually have a legitimate rubber seal. Just a very tight gap. What about a sealed bearing? I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter. So there we go. We're all right there together. Drop it in. Here comes the lid. You'll see the same thing. You'll see the bubbles begin to rise. It'll foam. It'll stop. Then when I let the atmosphere back in, we will have a grease bearing. See? It's pulling that air right past the seal. A sealed bearing is going to take longer. You should expect that. And that's why we're getting the foam, is it's getting smaller bubbles. 
That looks like about it. Let the atmosphere back in. And there it is. One freshly lubed, sealed roller bearing, ready to go back in whatever device or tool that you might need. This one just happens to be the top bearing on a palm sander. Perfectly good for what it is intended to do. What if you don't have a big vacuum pump? What do you do then? Is everything I just showed you useless? No. It's not. In fact, you do have access to essentially a vacuum pump. They're cheap, they're easy, and I'll pretty much guarantee there's one in your cupboard right now. All you need is one of those. A simple run-of-the-mill canning jar and lid. You put your oil in, you put your bearing in your oil. You boil it just as if you're canning carrots. Once it reaches temperature, take it off, screw it down, set it aside. As it cools, it pulls a vacuum. That's how it seals. And then you wait for it to be fully cool, pop the top, air rushes in, immediately your bearing is greased. But each and every one of you can do this at home and save a bearing of your own. Thanks for watching. I sure hope you find this helpful. Good luck with all of your projects.